Hey guys, here I'm going to show you five or six different formulas to get the last value from a list in Excel. We'll start with a very simple list and then graduate to a list that may have blanks or empty cells within it or even errors within it. And then I'll show you variations such as how to get the last numeric value or how to get the last cell that has specific text within it. After that, I'll show you how to change the formula to work for your situation and your needs. As well, in the description for this video, I'll put a link to another video I did on the same topic, but with a different approach. And that's something you might find helpful. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. All right, let's begin with a simple list first. And a simple list is a list that has no blanks, no errors, no issues. So a list that you'll probably never encounter in Excel, I feel like. But let's do it first because it's the easiest one to do. So here is our formula to return the last value from a simple list. We use the index function and only two arguments, the range from which we want to return a value and the row from which we want to return a value within that range. So let me make a slightly easier version of this and then we'll put back in the count A formula. So let's say we have index A1 to A6, comma, and I want to get the value red. Red is in the second row of our range. Now it's also the second row of the worksheet, but that does not matter. So I'll show you why in a moment. So A1 to A6, 2, and it returns red. Now let's go here and let's say that our range instead of A1 to A6 is A2 to A7. Now red is in the first row of our range. So it doesn't line up with the worksheet rows. And I just want to do this to point out that now red is 1. It's in the first row of the range. So this range reference is relative to this range. However, simple lists usually begin in row one, so usually it lines up with the worksheet rows. But now you can see red. If I left it at two, as you can imagine, it would just be green. So how does this work up here? Well, we have our range right here, and then we use the count a formula or function right here. So count a, you can see, counts the number of cells in a range that are not empty. So it counts this range. It needs to be the same range here as this range here. And it says, okay, four cells have values. Nice. So it returns four to the index function, which is going to then say, hey, go to this range and give me the value from the fourth row. And I just hit F9 there to show you the four. It's a sort of in-cell evaluation of formulas. Really awesome little trick. So that's how the count A works. Now, one thing to note, what this means, is that your simple list should not have any other data above it. Or you should only include your list in these ranges. For instance, if you include the entire range, the entire column A right here in your simple list, and then you have other data above your list which has nothing to do with it, it will be incorrect. It's going to be inaccurate. So select only the range that will have the list, count A, and you're good to go with this guy. But now let's move to the interesting formula. Simple, all good. The robust guy, the guy that takes into account blanks and returns the last value. We use the lookup function for that and a crazy looking syntax. <laughs> So what I'm going to do here is to explain how to get this to work for what you want, go through a couple examples of it, and then at the end, if you like torture, I'll explain exactly how it works. So all you need to do for your data to return the last value from a list that can have blanks is to change this range and this range. This range is the list itself, and this range is the list from which you want to return a value. They do not have to be the same range, but they do have to be the same size. 
So if you click the link to the other tutorial I did on this topic, you'll see an example where these two ranges are not the same range. It's a rather interesting little variation of this. So that's all you have to change to get it to work for your workbook. Now let's move on to the part that you can change to customize this formula for yourself. So all you're going to deal with ever is this and this part right here inside of the red parentheses. So this is the part that makes sure that no blank cell is returned. And what you need to understand from here is that this simply must evaluate to true or false. So the conditional check here, even though it's against a range, you could assume that it's against an individual cell. And as long as you make that equal true or false, you can then apply it to the entire range. So let me show you what that means in the worksheet. Let's copy this. The syntax might look a little bit confusing, but it just says, do not select the blank cells. Technically, it says, not equal to nothing. Could it sound more confusing? I don't know. <laughs> so what you can do is this, select this cell, and then input the condition. We can hit Enter, go down, and we see a bunch of trues and falses. So this function over here will return the last true. It will not return an error and it will not return a false. The last true is blue. So all that you need to do to make variations of this formula is to change the condition. So let's say that we want to get the last numeric value. Well, how do you get the last numeric value? You have this lovely little function called isNumber. Checks whether a value is a number, returns true or false. All we need is something that returns true or false. So let's put that in there. Copy it down. All right, the last true is 12. Last numeric value is 12. So. You have the range with your list in it, and you must now surround that range with is number, just like we surrounded this individual cell. Is number. Remember, just inside the red parentheses. Now let's move on to, conceptually, maybe a little bit more difficult topic. The last value that begins with G. How do you check if something begins with G? We need to get the first letter from the cell, and then we need to see if it equals G. So we can do equals, left, grab the cell. You could put the number of characters if you wanted to, but you don't have to, because by default it is one. And to make it return true or false, we do a simple check. So you might not know that you can do this. Just equal sign after the function and G. Copy it down, and we only have one true right here. Now you can test if this works. Let's do another word here, and watch green will now change to group. Perfect. So you can see that we can make this as complex or as simple as we need to. It just has to return true or false and then we apply it to the range once again. So here I have left and I have included the one, just means get one character from the left, which is also default. Up to you how you want to do that. Left C1 to C51 equals G. If you want to make sure that it also matches the entire word, can you imagine how you would do that? Let's go ahead and put this error dude down here, get him out of the way. Let's say that I want to make sure that this equals red. Just like that, equals this cell equals red. <laughs> kind of a confusing syntax, yes. Watch my tutorial on true and false. If this is confusing for you, true and false is a powerful foundation in Excel for more complex formulas and functions. This is a good example of that. 
So true, and it's the only true. So if we go ahead and we put this in the formula, then it should return red. And for this, you should always just copy and paste it in. Do not risk inputting it incorrectly. Now we got our range right here. Equals red. So that's all, a conditional check. Does this range, does the cell in this range equal red? And it returns red. Let's put a little note there. Last cell with the word red in it. Now this doesn't seem so helpful because we just returned the cell that has the word in it that we're looking for. So red and red, right? But remember that you can change this so it doesn't have to return a value from this range. It can return a value somewhere else in the table. The example I linked to uses sales data or sample sales data. So you find the user, let's say their name is Red, and then you get their sales, their last sale, and you could return that. So the other tutorial is pretty helpful for that although I do think it might be a little bit confusing in its own way, so that's why I'm making this current tutorial. So all you have to do is have a condition that evaluates a true or false. And now let's go to the last example here, which is an error. So you may have noticed that the whole time we had an error here, and it is not returned in any of these cases except for the last one. And that gets to how this formula works. It isn't going to return an error. It returns the last viable value. You could think of it that way. So we have to change the true false a little bit in order to get a correct value. And all we do for that is, so you can combine functions however you need to to return true and false. So here we use this is blank. We copy it down. Now we have no more errors. See how that error just went away? But we don't want it to be false, false, true for the blank, and then false. We want it to be the opposite of that. So we just put a little not in front of it. A not changes false to true and true to false. Just reverses it. That's all. So now you can see the last value that is true is the last value in the list. So right here, we have not and is blank around the range. So it looks confusing, but it's really not that confusing. All you have to do, remember, is change this inside the red parentheses to evaluate to true or false for your range. And this range right here is the output range, must be the same size as this range, the same height, but it does not have to be the same range. I keep trying to beat that into your head because it's important, and I do cover it in the other tutorial that I link to in the description. <laughs> and I'm done pointing you to that one if you want the other example. All right, now, 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 let's go ahead, delete this, and let's talk about how this function works. Let's go back here with the numeric example. I think that one might be the easiest one to get. And let's make our range a bit smaller so that we can evaluate the formula and you'll see it a little bit better. All right, so you know that this is the range from which we return a value. You know that this evaluates a bunch of true or falses, and it actually returns a list of trues and falses. But what you may not know is that true and false is represented by a number. And let me show you that really quickly. So let's input true here and false here. So let's go like this and multiply it by one. We get a one and we get a zero. So true and false are numeric values. Now what if we divide it by one? One or use one to divide it by true or false. One divided by true is one. 1 divided by 0 is an error. So that's how true and false work. 
it allows you to do the next thing, which is right here. So this is a list of true and false values. If I select this and evaluate it, hit F9, you'll see a bunch of trues and falses. But we want a numeric value if we can have one. So we use one and we divide it by false and true, which are zero and one. So we're going to get a bunch of errors and a bunch of ones. Okay, so I evaluate that and I get a bunch of errors and then there's our one right here. Now, this is our list through which we will conduct a lookup. What value are we going to look up? This two right here. So we're going to look for a two in this list. We will not find a two. What lookup will do is it will go to the next highest value at the bottom of the list. That's how we get the last value. So if we have a bunch of ones here, it looks for the two, says, hey, I can't find a two. What's the next highest value? One. All right, let's return the last one. Okay, I return the last one. And then all of this will essentially return a positional value to the lookup, and it'll say, hey, okay, look up this position in this range. And if we evaluate this range right now, you will see a list of values. So these are the values from this range. Uh, that's how the lookup function works. That's how this function works. It involves a few topics which are kind of advanced in Excel. And yeah, it's kind of tricky. And here's the thing. At the end of the day, you do not need to know about all this. You do not need to really know how this works. All you need to do is to get this guy to evaluate to true or false right in here. And then make sure you select the output range and make sure it's the same size as this range. That's all you have to do to get it to work for your situation and your data set. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.